This will be my fourth attempt at recording this video. Every time I get three quarters through it, somebody calls me. I didn't know I was that popular till today, but anyway, these are assorted pieces that comprise the servo and the 125 transmission. This is a stock one right here. And the way it works is you get a cover and you have the piston and the piston has what I call a, a guide. And that keys in like that. And then the pin, you know, goes through like that. And it locates on the outside, on the inside. And there's a return spring that sits in here. And that's captivated too by the clip that goes there. There. So I couldn't recall if we modified an original piston for my servo. And now that I see them side by side, we clearly did not. So the stock one, as you can see, has this aluminum cast piston, has a dish for the spring. It has a groove in the back with the line pressure comes in through this track right here and it gets up in this area and it pushes the piston up and engages the pin into the band, engages the band. That's how it works. And um, what happened to mine was my transmission guy said, you know what, if we get rid of this land, you'll have all that more ply area. You notice this one is a one inch three, 233. This one's 233. This one's a one inch 663. This one is a one inch 245. So there are big ones, there are small ones. And the bigger one, of course, has less apply area compared to the small one. So his thinking about getting the smallest apply, uh, guide area you can, gives you more apply area, is sound. So what we did was took a stock cover, welded a plate over the back. So now you don't really need the guide. I mean, the pin really guides it in the transmission case. So you have all this area now to apply the, the servo piston. So that's what we did. And there's a couple of shims here that gives you the proper preload on the band. So now all this area is your apply area, way more than stock. And um, you have to grind this wall down because the fluid, you know, would have a hard time you know, from here around. So it's just a much bigger area. So anyway, uh, that's what we did. So that's, I knew there was some trickery going on there. Couldn't think of what it was. There's also no return spring. Uh, which could make it bang on downshift three to two, but I never felt it. So, uh, I mean, this always shifted like a stock transmission. It was firmer than stock for sure. And if you got on it, it would, you know, trip the tires, you know, one to two and that kind of stuff. But I thought that was maybe because of the power it was making because this thing, you know, I had 24 pounds of boost. So it was making upwards of 260 horsepower at the wheels. So that's how we made this stuff a little more custom, make it grab a little better. And my friend Scott had asked me if this servo or pin was binding on the bore. And you can see it goes in and out quite easily. And if you listen, you hear exhausting air, so it's still, you know, the seal is still sealing, but I'm gonna change all that anyway. So it does not bind in the bore. So I don't think that was an issue. I think the problem was just that the band was overpowered. Maybe it got old. I mean, this thing is about 12 years old. It's only got about 7,000 miles on it in actuality, but you know, it's old. I put a, a lot of beatings on it. It sat a lot too, which maybe that contributed to it. I don't know. You know, all the miles it has are hard miles. So one other thing that caught my eye was there's a check valve that goes in here. It's just like a, a barbell with a spring and it blocks off that passage inside there on the, uh, I want to say it's a two, three shift. I'm trying to remember, I, I think it actually, that channel acts as the accumulator for the two, three shift. I believe what it does is the servo applies for one, two, and then it kicks off the two, three. And as it kicks off, the piston surface acts as the accumulator for two, three. And that channel is blocked by the barbell, whatever you call it, the thing that goes in there. I can't remember the name of it. I didn't drop it anywhere. It's not on my drain pan, it's not in here. It's not up there amidst all the parts. So I can only assume he didn't put it in. I'm gonna to have to ask him about that one. Uh, I don't know if it would live without that. I, I don't know. Um, I'll have to read with the, the um, theory of operations book again. I read it the other night and I thought, you need that thing, but I'm not a transmission expert. I'm not an engineer, I'm not a fluid dynamicist, so I don't know. So that's something I have to look into. Uh, I also need to show this to you. I've been worried for years that he didn't block out the one, two accumulator like I wanted him to. And he said he did. And when I took it apart, I wasn't sure. I was looking for a blocked passage or something obvious. 
I even asked him about it yesterday on the phone. He said, well, I'll look for like a aluminum slug in the, in the spacer plate or something like that. And then it just occurred to me this morning that here is my pin and here is my accumulator piston. And where there should be a spring, there is a big slug of metal. So I'm thinking that is the block. <laughs> that is what defeats my one, two accumulator. It was right in front of me the whole time and I was driving him crazy and looking all around for passages that are blocked. And I just noticed this morning, I was watching a video on YouTube about disassembling a 125 and the guy clearly, clearly takes a spring out of here. So I have no spring, I have that. So I'm thinking this is blocked out, that's it. So I have no one, two accumulator, which is the way I want it. And the last thing I was gonna show you was the valve body I need to take apart. I wanna see if I can modify the pressure regulator in the pump. The pressure regulator valve itself looks just like the one in a 204R. And a matter of fact, if you Google it, it appears to be the same one as a 204R on an early 700, or maybe all 700s. Uh, the boost valves, I'm not sure. In the picture in the ATSG book, they look the same, but it's a drawn picture, so you really can't tell. So I wanna take that apart and compare it to some 204R boost valves and see if it's something I can slide in there to make things a little more snappy. And I also wanna check my valve body to see if any of the parts in this uh, Transgo CK125, SK125 rather shift kit are in there. I don't know why I have this kit. Um, I don't know. I had a superior kit and I have this kit. The superior kit was clearly opened. This one, I don't think was. I mean, I opened it just to look at it, but I don't think I used anything. So it's a pretty good bet. Whatever is in here is as good as what's in that kit or it already has that kit, but my builder said, why don't you take it apart and compare it to the kit you have and see if everything looks the same or what you have looks better, use that. So I need to look at that too. And that's about it. That's where we stand. I just called Transstar, they ordered a torque converter. That's all he had available. Everything else, like I wanted Red Eagle clutches, choline steels, a Kevlar band. He can't get it anymore. I did find an Alto high performance rebuild kit online. He has no access to it. He Googled it and the only place that shows it is like Oregon transmissions. I never did business with them. I'm not sure if they're reputable or not. So I have to try to get it from them if I can, or I gotta go on eBay, or I have to settle for the Borg Warner clutches, which, you know, are good quality. Just, I believe this has Red Eagles in it. I want to just go back in with those if I can, but if I can't, I can't. I mean, this transmission, as he put it, is antiquated, which <laughs> I told him was very hurtful. I prefer the term classic, but uh, they stopped making 125s in the 90s, I think, or yeah, I think it was the 90s, but Whatever the case, I uh, I have to rebuild mine, so I got to get parts someplace. So that's where I stand as of today. So hope you enjoyed today's short video, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow.